Hey everyone, today we are diving into one of the most critical components of distributed systems, load balancers. If you ever wondered how massive systems like Netflix, Amazon or even your favorite multiplayer games stay online while handling millions of requests per second, the answer often starts with load balancing. Load balancers are like the traffic cops of distributed systems. They ensure incoming requests get routed efficiently to the right server. So no single machine is overwhelmed. For software engineers, mastering load balancing isn't just nice to have, it's essential. Whether you are prepping up for a system design interview or optimizing a high-scale app, you will want this in your toolkit. In this video, we will cover the basics of the most popular algorithms from system design interview perspective. So let's get started. Imagine you are running a web app and thousands of users are logging in simultaneously. Without load balancing, all those requests would hit a single server. Not only would it slow it down, but it might crash it entirely. Enter horizontal scaling, the strategy of adding multiple servers to distribute the load. But how do you decide which server handles which request? That's the job of the load balancer. It sits in front of your servers, receiving all requests and distributing them based on a defined algorithm. Load balancers can appear at different application layers. For instance, most web applications consist of front-end, back-end, and database layers. As a result, several load balancers can be used in different application parts to optimize request routing. Load balancer can be between users such as clients and front-end servers. It can be between front-end and back-end servers, or it can be between back-end servers and a database. Now, in a distributed system, servers can go down or get overloaded at any time. And that's where health checks come in. The load balancer regularly pings each server to ensure it's available and performing well. If a server doesn't respond or starts slowing down, the load balancer redirects traffic away from it until it recovers. Think of it as the load balancer playing doctor for your servers, always monitoring and keeping the system running smoothly. When it comes to load balancing algorithms, we have two main choices, static algorithms and dynamic algorithms. Static algorithms rely on predefined rules and parameters like CPU capacity or connection limits. They are simple and fast, but not adaptive. For example, if one server suddenly slows down, a static algorithm won't know to stop sending requests to it. Dynamic algorithms are smarter. They adapt in real time using metrics like response time or active connections. But while more accurate, they require constant monitoring, which adds some overhead. Understanding these balancing strategies is essential because they determine how requests are routed to servers in a distributed system. So let's walk through each strategy with examples and simple analogies. Let's start with the random strategy. The random strategy is straightforward. The load balancer picks a server at random for each incoming request. It works well when all the servers are identical in terms of capacity and performance, and if traffic is evenly distributed over time. So imagine a delivery company with multiple warehouses. Each packet is sent to a randomly selected warehouse. This works fine if all warehouses are equally staffed and equipped, but if one is already overwhelmed, delays can occur. And so this method doesn't account for server load or capacity. So it can lead to uneven distribution, especially in high load systems. Round Robin assigns requests to servers in fixed sequence. For example, request one is always routed to server one, request two to server two, request three to server three, and so on and so forth, cycling back to server one after the last server. It works well when all servers are equally capable and request processing times are predictable. Now, round robin doesn't consider the current workload on each server. So if server one is slower than the others, it might still get the same number of requests leading to delays. Weighted round robin is a variation which adds weight to servers based on their capacity. It works well when servers have different processing capabilities. For example, a system has two servers. Server one has double the CPU power of server two. So the load balancer assigns twice as many requests to server one. And so the main benefit here is that it ensures that more powerful servers handle a greater share of the traffic, optimizing resource utilization. In the sticky version of round robin, the first request of a particular client is sent to a server according to the normal round robin rules. However, if the client makes another request during a certain period of time or the session lifetime, then the request will go to the same server as before. This strategy ensures that requests from the same client always go to the same server during a session. With sticky round robin, the necessary data can be accessed quickly from just one server. 
which is much faster if the same data was retrieved from multiple servers. And it works well for applications requiring session consistency, like shopping carts or user dashboards. For example, a user browsing a shopping website always has their request routed to server 3 for this session. This ensures that their card information is stored in one place and processed efficiently. The least connection is a dynamic approach which routes the current request to the server with the fewest active connections. And it works well for dynamic traffic with variable request processing times. You can think of it like a call center where calls are assigned to agents with the fewest active conversations. If one agent has fewer calls, they get the next incoming customer. So this approach prevents overloading busy servers and ensure faster response times. Now, instead of considering the server with the fewest active connections, this balancing algorithm selects a server whose average response time over a certain period of time in the past was the lowest. So sometimes this approach is used in combination with the least number of active connections. So if there is a single server with the fewest connection, then it processes the current request. And if there are multiple servers with the same lowest number of connections, then the server with the lowest response time among them is chosen to handle the request. This algorithm works well in systems where server performance vary dynamically due to factors like CPU load or memory usage. And so it is often used alongside with least connection strategy. For example, if multiple servers have the same fewest connections, then one of the fastest response time is chosen. And so this algorithm ensures that users get the quickest possible response. Now, Load balancers often make decisions based on specific client attributes to ensure that all of a client's request and related data are directed to the same server. A common way to achieve this is by applying a hash function to the client's IP address, mapping it to a specific server with the available pool. Ideally, the selected hash function has to evenly distribute all of the incoming requests among all servers. So it works well for session consistency, ensuring that all requests from a single user go to the same server. For example, a user's IP address is hashed to server 2. So all their subsequent requests are always routed to server 2, maintaining session data on one server. URL hashing works similarly to IP hashing. But instead of hashing the client's IP address, this method hashes the URL path to decide the target server. This method is often useful when we want to store information within a specific category or domain on a single server, independent of which clients make the request. It works well for domain-specific workloads, like routing all payment-related requests to one server group. For example, requests for slash payments are hashed to server 1, while slash orders always goes to server 2. Overall, in complex systems, load balancers often combine multiple strategies to achieve optimal performance. For instance, a system might primarily use weighted least connections to manage typical traffic efficiently, but switch to IP hashing during peak loads to maintain session consistency. Ultimately, there is no one-size-fits-all balancing algorithm. The best choice depends on your system's architecture, specific requirements, and the nature of incoming traffic. So in my next video, we'll dive deeper into the types of load balancers from a system design perspective, exploring their use cases and how to choose the right one for your architecture. Stay tuned.